right, since we're live, welcome everybody to Around the Product Development, uh, which is our weekly series where we dive deep into the world of digital product creation, all in just 25 minutes. Uh, here we explore every stage from ideation to conversion monetization, providing you with actionable insights and practical knowledge. Each week, we bring you fresh perspectives from industry standard experts, giving you the opportunity to learn directly from their hands-on experience. All this is possible thanks to our Agile Product Builders community, uh, which is a Slack community powered by Boulder, who are digital product creators and consultants. Uh, so get ready to gain invaluable skills and, and strategies that you can apply to your own products uh, right away since no fluff, just, just real talk. And today, I believe, is a very special episode we have uh, since we've invited not one, but two extraordinary guests uh, from Objective Investment Banking Evaluation that will share with us how to leverage tech-driven content and storytelling uh, to scale your businesses. Uh, welcome, Kari. Welcome, Chani. Uh, I do not want to put your roles because they're extraordinary backgrounds into my mouth. So, Kari, if I could ask you to briefly introduce yourself and then Chani, uh, I would appreciate a lot. Thank you so much, Oscar, for having us. Both Cheney and I are big fans of Boulder and the community you mentioned. Um, hey, everyone, I'm Kathy. I started my career in marketing over 13 years ago in financial services. And back in the day, what that really meant was putting together pitch decks, maybe email newsletters was just coming to be a thing. And today, fast forward, I'm in digital marketing, which I define as the intersection of brand storytelling and technology. And I get to really play in that intersection every day as vice president of Objective. Uh, Objective was founded in 2006, where investment banking and valuation firms specialize in advising closely held middle market businesses within our industries of focus, helping them sell, also known as getting acquired. So I'm so fortunate to um, be at Objective and also to have my partner in crime, Cheney Smith, who just got promoted, everyone, to Director of Marketing at Objective. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is my, my debut, webinar debut with the title. So thank you, Kathy. Um, and thank you, Oscar, for having us. Um, I'm Cheney. I am the Director of Marketing at Objective Investment Banking and Valuation that Kathy's given you a little bit of background on. Um, I've been with the firm for almost about six years. So I've seen a really large evolution of what a marketing department can look like at the start of something that doesn't have a ton of investment or resources in it versus today in which it's one of our pillars of our business. Um, and so it's been really exciting to be a part of that and to watch it. Um, I started my marketing career in consumer products actually, um, and then eventually fell in love with and found financial services. Um, so here I am and really exciting to have this talk today. It's amazing. I'd love to get to know a bit more about this slot you to share. Uh, with financial industry, but going straight to the meeting because this is what our audience came here today uh, craving for. I would love to start with uh, some insights, whatever you can share of objectives, go to market strategy, right? How do you tailor your approach to, to different segments within vast market you, you encounter every single day, uh, which is investment banking industry? Like you cooperate with plethora of different companies, uh, different different approach. So please, Kati, if you could share a bit more on, on your insights, your perspective. Yeah, that's a great point. And I'm glad that Cheney mentioned her background in consumer and then coming into investment banking, because actually it all starts with the data. In fact, at Objective, one of our famous things that we say is what doesn't get measured doesn't get done. <laughs> And so when we're looking at um, our data of uh, what we've been doing, we've always targeted successful business owners. And because of that, we've always developed insightful content that cuts through the noise. We saw the data trends around hyper targeted content specific to their practice. So our managing directors come with experience 
that's specific to their practice. Um, for go-to-market strategy, talking at large in financial services, I also have a background in real estate and financial services. It's about making sure that what you're delivering to your target audience is what they're engaging with. And so our data show that where we had the highest engagement um, was that hyper-targeted industry-specific content. And so we had to shift from being one content calendar that we would sprinkle in some content specific, practice specific content, um, speaking more broadly about investment banking and valuation services to then suddenly six very unique uh, marketing calendars. And that's where the insight came in on like, why don't we leverage technology instead of putting on more bodies? Um, and how do we speed up the go-to-market of content development itself. It was a perfect intersection with Gen AI coming on board and already having a very, very developed marketing automation um, platforms out there like HubSpot that we were able to um, speed up our content development process by almost seven times by maintaining and still maintaining the quality because of the fact that we were uh, rethinking the process. Um, so what was previously very um, driven around, you know, just human people and incredible marketers to now incredible marketers leveraging the tools of Gen AI and automation. Thank you. And Chani, given that the B2B sales process is way longer than B2C, and you said you background from being a customer reader, uh, taking the, the chaotic, uh, crazy market we, we're facing all right now, you know, trying to sell whatever we can, whoever we can. Uh, what are the key factors for you to consider when designing such a marketing campaign? Kari mentioned six calendars. It's a lot of job. I know, you know, leveraging technology helps, but what are, you know, your tops to focus on throughout the process? Yeah, well, that's that's a great question. So with investment banking specifically, we focus on sell side M&A. So we are helping business owners sell their businesses. You are right. The sales cycle is very lengthy or it can be um, sometimes from a couple of months up to years. We've worked with business owners for three, four years before getting them prepared for an eventual sale. Um, not only that, the decision to hire a specific investment bank happens even before that. And that can be a very lengthy process as well. So on the marketing side, it really is industry agnostic almost when you start with a foundation of a strategy of segmenting as far down as you can, getting the messaging very, very narrow and trying to meet someone at the right time, at the right place with the right message. I mean, that's just what marketers do regardless of industry, right? And so if we apply that to investment banking, it just takes a little bit longer. So you are meeting them multiple times versus with a consumer product, maybe you only have to meet them a couple of times at a specific place with a specific discount or message. With investment mm. banking, it is very different because with these business owners, it's one of the largest decisions they're going to make in their life on what investment bank they choose. So we employ tactics like a nurture flow, as an example. So an email series can be five to 10 emails over a period of months and months in which we are providing them resources that we think are meeting them at the right time with the right asset, essentially. So we're walking them through this journey of if you're just now thinking about selling your business, here's an asset or a downloadable guide that can help you start to think about that. The following month, it's now that we've done that, we're continuing to walk you through this path of things that might be valuable for you. So from a marketing perspective, we're using a mixture of owned, earned, and paid media. We're just doing it on a longer time schedule, and we're doing it in a much more tactful way because with financial services or a specialty service like this, um, it takes the perfect message. Um, mm -hmm. to, to really get them engaged and to make sure that they understand that you know them, you know their business, you know their industry. So therefore, a half hour or an hour long call is worth their time. Yeah, definitely. I believe these are like 
uh, wish of, of a marketer, right? To, you know, decrease number of spam you send or receive on your email boxes, right? You don't want to spam people around. And same time, you want to, you know, uh, increase your ROI, right? So this is kind of always looking for some balance between and what you just mentioned, like looking for this very narrow, direct, clear message that's well received by your receiver. It's a tough one, but I'm very interested in particular tools or platform you use to, to, you know, to make it effective, Caddy. Yeah, definitely. So on the Gen AI side, we've looked at a couple of different tools. We've looked at Phrase.io, um, Koala.sh, Jasper AI. I'm sure some of these are familiar to those who are listening. They're super helpful in everything on our end. We think of it as brainstorming SEO research all the way to drafting that first version of the content. But the human touch that's so important is, like Cheney mentioned, being really tactful with the final um, asset that we're delivering. And so the editing process is so important for the human to go through and to make sure that you're adding that specialization and adding the expertise and um, reworking the language. Because most of the time you'll see that, you know, Gen AI specialty is just summarizing, but then giving that key takeaway, giving that true um, value to these really, really busy um, business owners want to make sure that, you know, if they're going to give us a couple minutes of their time to read the article, they're walking away with something that can impact their business. And again, ultimately down the line, like Janie mentioned, um, months and maybe even years from now, think of us because of how powerful what we're putting together is. Mm -hmm. And this comes uh, to the storytelling part of the today's subject, I would say. It is a extremely powerful tool, not only in marketing, sales, uh, PR, uh, just customer relations, right? How do you incorporate? Is it this 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 first idea, this uh, what you kind of mentioned, genuine idea to, you know, uh, get rid of the, of the first friction you encounter every time you start writing something new? Or is it somewhere else is this human touch you you put an effort on and you know the, the kind of uh what chani mentioned before make the message very specific to the target audience how do you incorporate storytelling into your content strategy which resonates with the exact segment you want to reach chani so i think when it comes to storytelling you really do have to put yourself in the shoes of that specific business owner. And when we say get really narrow with the message, for us, essentially what that means is industry specific, but also where they are in their journey. So Objective has six industry practices in which we have managing directors and a team of people that are experts in that industry and focus only on doing investment banking or valuation in that industry. So we use our SMEs, our subject matter experts. We also use our knowledge of what a business owner needs to be hearing at that time. Like what are the emotional things that they're going through right now when they're deciding on, do I sell my business? Is now the right time to sell my business? Should I use an investment bank at all? If so, which one? There's so many questions out there. And so really tapping into what are they emotionally feeling? What are what are the physical things that they're kind of going through and having to have conversations about? And how can we provide them educational information to help walk them through that process at the right time? And so when you're telling that story, it really needs to be from the perspective of what that person is going through at that given moment in that specific industry, which is why to Kathy's point, we now have all of these specific content calendars and campaigns that are specific to industry practices, because that's the only way to achieve it. Um, I would also argue that, yes, we bring in generative AI resources and tech to help us um, just from a an efficiency standpoint, uh, a research and intelligence standpoint, and a scalability standpoint. But having a human touch on the front end, in the middle of, and on the back end of the process is required. It's not critical. It's not paramount. It really is truly a requirement to 
make something perform well because the human has to create the strategy and the story on the front end, use Gen AI to help build that foundation or to help understand what the right target keywords are, right? For an SEO purpose, as an example. But the human has to come in and do the editing, put the real intelligence behind it, use our SMEs to also add intelligence. And then on the back end, do all of the editing and make sure that it's put on the right platform at the right time with the right audience, et cetera. So it, it is really uh, using your tools wisely, but the human element I feel like is never, at least for the foreseeable future, going to go away because it's just a critical requirement to make sure that something's done well. Yeah, and hopping on that, Cheney had such a great point about the three different points in the process that the human touch has to happen. And upfront is really where we did a lot of our work um, in that mapping of the journey that Cheney mentioned. And um, as much as technology can help us maybe make it visually more appealing, easy to digest, it took the human connecting with the subject matter experts to really dig into what is the pain, et cetera. There's great frameworks out there um, to visualize this from experience arcs to empathy mapping, and then plugging it into automation software like HubSpot, et cetera, so that you're thinking through not only what the customer experience is, but then partnered towards that back end um, of the human touch that Cheney was mentioning, which is how does um, the actual experience of the different pieces of content lay out? And once you set it, you can put it into a system, read the data and continue to optimize. Right. And talking about optimization, first we're looking at some metrics, right? So mm -hmm. we covered the journey, we covered how, and uh, how do you measure it? Like, what do you measure? How do you describe the success of your content uh, marketing strategies for, I don't know, if it's per segment or if it's a particular part of this customer journey? If you could just talk a bit more uh, about it, Kadi. Yeah, definitely. Like. I love uh, marketing software because it literally can measure down to every little niche like you're talking about. Um, you have segments within a persona and you can see how that conversion is on one asset, on one part of a journey, on the whole journey. So it can also be as a marketer overwhelming to have so much data at your fingertips. And we find that it's um, easier to have like a true North metric. Um, we use the analogy of like, if we were stranded on an island, what is that one metric that we're gonna take with us? And um, that becomes kind of like our leading indicator into like, was, is this campaign heading towards success or do we need to intervene? Um, so overall, when I think about content strategy, I think about the upward trend of organic search. Um, I almost think of it as a uh, analogy would be the company website is like a brick and mortar store. Organic search is your foot traffic. So you want to make sure that where your store is, is getting more and more popular. The neighborhood, the street is getting more and more popular. And in uh, digital marketing for us, that's domain authority. You want to see that domain authority increasing. And that's kind of the leading indicator that we keep track of. There is a number of different SEO tools out there that track um, your domain authority, SEMrush, uh, AHrefs, uh, Moz, they all do it. They do it a little differently. They calculate it differently. So make sure whichever platform you choose, you stick to it because you want to see the trend. It might The numbers might shift here and there, but it's about that trend that you want to keep an eye on. Thank you. Chani, maybe you have some, you know, metrics or different approach, different angle, different perspective uh, that Kathy shared. I think I completely agree with Kathy as always. Um, but <laughs> I do think that I do think that each channel has its own kind of North Star, if you will, um, or set of KPIs that that need to be considered. So for social, as an example, it feels different than the website, right? You're you're measuring different things to to get your true performance, um, and and that's just the way that it goes. I think that all of those things tie into the website and your organic search and your domain authority, um, because everything should build on each other. Um, but if you are looking channel specific, 
Yes, there are some different metrics that you should be looking at. Like when it comes to social, it should really be about engagement. And like for us, we are typically sharing educational content. And so we are more so concerned about impressions and clicks to see how many people are we reaching and how many people are truly engaging with that content and then being directed to the website to spend some time in that article. Once you then look at website analytics, you can spend some more time looking at how long does the majority of people actually stay on that page? Do they make it to the end? Do they click the CTA at the bottom? So then you can start to get into some other metrics to see how it's actually performing with your audience. But I think what Kathy is saying, if we're boiling it down, that is definitely the true north is, is how is your domain authority? How is your foot traffic? Um, how many people are finding you? How many of those people are new? Um, because that's essentially what we're trying to do, right? Is grow the network, grow exposure, grow credibility. Um, so that's a great way to measure if you're doing it well. Yeah, absolutely. It's always good to, you know, not copy paste all the metrics that you could see at your competitors or similar companies. Just think about it uh, completely out of the box, focus on what's your USP of your business, et cetera, et cetera. Then present it in the uh, uh, in the right way, like with the right metrics. All right, uh, three last question I do have because I'm um, just looking at some point at the clock and it's running so fast time today. If you could share one, two tips or tools or, or resources you always go for, they're, you know, the, the foundation uh, you trust, uh, what would it be? I shared some really great different like tools on the conversation, um, but where do I go and find new tools to try out? Um, Marketing Brew is a really great email newsletter for marketers, um, and they do cover a lot of different subject matter from storytelling and brand and communication all the way into the MarTech stack. And so I love reading that newsletter. I highly recommend it. Thank you. Chani. Um, I feel like the question could go a lot of different ways, but um, as far as something that I always go to, would recommend to everybody, um, is actually more of a project management software, and that's Asana. Um, I mean, you could use any any type, right? I mean, there's there's Trellis, there's Monday, there's all all of these different Basecamp, all these different options. Um, but when you really boil it down, the marketing department has to execute and perform. And in order to do that, you need to project manage well. And in order to do that, you need a software. Um, so I would highly recommend if you're not on that bandwagon, jump on it sooner rather than later. It's extremely helpful to keep the team together and keep efficiencies moving. All right. I love what you say that this question could go like 100% <laughs> different ways and you, you cover totally different topics. What I love. I appreciate it. And last question for today. Because you, you you actually evaluate companies all the time, you help them, right, to to the owners, uh, to, to sell them uh, with profit. How do you feel about well-executed or how you measure what's more impactful for the, for the company? Uh, is the well-executed content strategy can actually boost company's value in, in terms of, you know, investment banking, looking for potential buyer? If so, how, like what part of maybe content strategy or what part in, in general could help it to do it with most effective, optimized way, Kati? I think that Cheney touched on this and I'm going to dive deep into how ultimately content strategy is also about elevating the brand and brand visibility. And in our valuation practice, we um, specialize also around a service on um, intellectual property. And one of the biggest piece of intellectual property is actually your brand equity. Um, and so making sure that um, when it comes to your content strategy, how does it turn into creating a really successful business is making sure that everything you're developing builds towards that bigger brand 
um, story, the tools behind the brand, whether that's different trademark elements of what you're bringing, um, the different um, logo symbols. There's so many components to a brand um, that can have value and just being strategic around that. So um, the content strategy, of course, goes beyond what we talked about today, which are um, around you know text and and words it also covers video it covers so many different communication mediums and so making sure that you're being really thoughtful about um, what that channel is what that final asset is what that deliverability is but ultimately um, how that impacts um, your brand equity thank you Tony. last 30 seconds for you 30 seconds oh my um essentially uh, it is a challenge it is <laughs> when we when we look at a business's value, granted, I am not the subject matter expert for valuation or for investment banking, but we are looking to make sure that marketing is a key pillar for that business. Because when you really boil it down, that's how you receive new customers. So AKA, it keeps the business going. Um, we also apply that to our own business. And I think Kathy went into great detail on how it really applies to us specifically at Objective. But that is essentially what we aim for is to have marketing be one of the three pillars of the business to keep it standing, to keep it growing and to, and to enable it to scale um, using all of the, all of the wonderful things we were able to talk about on today's webinar. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you uh, that you woke up early, pretty early, right? Today to, to join us. Uh, uh, you know, Poland 3, 3 p.m. And uh, next week, same day, same time, which is 3 p.m. Monday. If you're interested in joining Agile Product Builders community, definitely do so. It's open. So just uh, go. Uh, you'll see the link in the description of this event. And next week, I'll be discussing... Uh, Fascinating subject, actually. We, we touched a bit uh, how AI, if so, could replace Scrum, actually. How it can help or, or mitigate risks considering, you know, project managers, uh, project triangles, making things in budget. And I'll discuss it with Kate Hobler from Brassville. Uh, so... Please be aware that future of team management is coming and will be discussed next week. Thank you one more time and hopefully see you soon on other events. Thank you, Oscar. Take Thank care, you, everyone. Oscar. Bye, Take everyone. Care, bye. See you all next week. Bye.